Uh, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Bishop Marcelo Sanchez Sorondo and Professor Stefano Samagni for organizing this opportunity for constructive dialogue. Thank you, you all for making the time and effort to discuss solidarity and global finance. Pope Francis has encouraged us to put the globalization of indifference behind us and to instead work toward a globalization of solidarity. Someone once said that the best way to predict the future is to invent it. Our work today will be guided by a main question. How are we going to dream up the future we want to invent? When I visited this academy last October, I talked about the dangers of technological global warming. I emphasize how technology has become an emotional addiction, how fake news is threatening our sense of trust, and how the concentration of digital dividends is increasing inequality. I also mentioned the countless opportunities that automation has to offer, as long as we don't expect to run on market autopilot. Today I would like to talk about something that complements this notion of technological global warming. The global cooling of ideas. I would describe this as a kind of conceptual extraflation. The same old recipes we have been turning to for decades have become overinflated bubbles, but the damage they are causing the real economy often goes unnoticed. To move beyond this conceptual stagflation, we need to set aside our ideological visions of reality. Ideologies, ideologies function as a kind of compulsory military service for our ideas, but they don't provide the practical answers we need today. We need to stop repeating the different types of automatic pilot style approaches that have failed us time and again. Latin America is a living proof that trickle-down economy theory didn't work. But even the trickle-down democracy theory is not working. In our region, the democratic process is increasingly perceived as a mechanism that enriches the elite but impoverish ordinary citizens. Seven out of every 10 Latin Americans are unsatisfied with how the democratic system functions in their country. Eight out of every 10 Latin Americans think that the government is in the hands of the few and they are not working for the common good. This is a blazing red light that has been fed by the uneven distribution of the benefits of globalization. To reinvent our democracy on more inclusive terms, there are two footprints we need to bear in mind. The ecological footprint left by our obsolete infrastructure and the social footprint left by wrong economic decisions. Our region has a foot in both the 19th and 21st centuries. While 78% of Latin Americans has, have a mobile phone only 60% have a continuous supply of drinking water. One in five Latin Americans who own a cell phone do not have a flushing toilet in their home. 30% of people who have just one meal a day also have a smartphone. These paradox are new forms of slavery, as Pope Francis has said. We need a new form of creative political will in order to overcome this situation. First of all, this means setting strategic priorities for managing public debt in our countries. This is about more than just the natural resource curse. It's also about the curse of a speculative financing. The free movement, movements of short-term capital are like the false prophets who come to us in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. In Argentina, we want to move past this situation using tools to ensure that we never take on, on unsustainable debt again. Never again. 
We want to do this through democratic institutions that safeguard the rule of law, transparency and accountability through a multi-sector economic and social council and a joint effort between the office of the president and the parliament. This is the spirit of the new social compact we are promoting. We all need to be innovative and pragmatic, mainly in the era of the post-container economy, when services now account for over 25% of global trade, and new global value chains are becoming even shorter as a result of robotizations, 3D printers, and intangible assets. The new platform economy needs a new digital tax scheme to share digital dividends. The problem isn't the rise of the robots, but rather the, like, the lack of real technological social justice. The IMF has calculated that the flow of capital into a few, few well-known tax havens is equivalent to the combined GDPs of China and Germany. These tax havens create social health by emptying out the public coffers, limiting the resources available for designing public policies, and increasing the tax burden of the small and medium-sized enterprises that drive job creation. Intelligent social spending is also key to solidarity-oriented finance. The 4.0 revolution needs to include 4.0 solidarity. One good example of this are the various conditional cash transfer programs in place in Latin America. Rigorous impact evaluations have found that these programs that provide assistance for just under 50% of the people living in poverty have brought about a 30% decrease in inequality. They were a success story in the 2010s but more will be needed in the 2020s. We need to create a new generation of CCT programs that are linked with digital literacy and new skills for the future of work. Social impact investment and properly regulated fintech, fintech could help support such policies, along with innovative social components that could include assistance from multilateral organizations. The best way to combat conceptual stagflation is pragmatism. But pragmatism without values is little more than the law of the jungle. We need innovation to bring about inclusion instead of promoting greed. Artificial intelligence is not compatible with artificial ethics. A sustainable economy is not compatible with, with corruption or an absence of values. Innovation with solidarity means big data with even bigger values. The algorithms are the, aren't the problem. The problems are heartless economics and soulless politics. The problem is the global cooling of idea and the global freezing of political cooperation. A deep transformation of this nature is no easy task. Economists and politicians will need to be re-educated. This is why it's so important for us to learn from your wisdom and experience. I know that this is a constructive dialogue will be incredibly enriching for us all, because you represent a practical resistance to the cooling of the ideas. I am also certain that we can find a way to bridge the divide between healthy finance and social solidarity. Finally, we are only 36 days into the 2020s, but I'm going to jump 75 years back in time. On July 1st, 1944, at the opening session of the Bretton Woods Conference, this message from President Franklin Roosevelt was read out, quoting, the spirit in which we carry on these discussions will set a pattern for future friendly consultations among nations in their common interest. The things that we need to do must be done, can only be done in concert. Finally, it depends on us to renew and restore that spirit on friendship and solidarity. Forging something truly new often involves recalling what we have forgotten. Thank you so much.